Welcome to all today. As in hi. Hi there. Thank you. Our centering prayer today is living and faithful spirit, the God in whom we we live and move and have our being, the God who is made known in Jesus Christ. Bless us one and all as we wait on you this day. Please remove from our minds and hearts whatever impediments hinder our worship or dampen our joy. Increase within us that holy longing for closeness, which can open our lives to a fuller delight and to a deeper commitment. May our hymns and prayers, our searching thoughts, and our hearing of the scriptures be an exercise in the holiest love making. By you, with you, and for you, may our lives publish your praise in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship, which we'll read responsibly. How about the gathering hymn? How about the gathering hymn? 2244. 2244. Two times. Two times. Disaster strikes, we need it. Need overwhelms the senses, and we carry the weight and worry of a perilous present and unknown future. God calls to us. Open, Open your heart and your hands. When we move, are moved with compassion, our hearts urging us to reach out to support our siblings in Christ, God calls to us. Open your heart and your hands. Children of God, as we gather for worship today, listen. God calls to us to open our hearts and our hands to one another in need and in abundance. May our worship open our hearts and our hands to one another as we learn to share with one another in all seasons. For we are all one in the body of Christ. Amen. Our next hymn is Change My Heart, O God. In the faith we sing 2152, and again we'll go through it twice.
Good Methodist Hymnal number 893, read, read responsibly. Please rise if you are comfortably able. that we often fail to love with all we have and are, often because we do not fully understand what loving means, often because we are afraid of risking ourselves. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other and we erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that by silence and ill-considered words, we have filled up all of the prejudices. Lord, we confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity and left little time for others. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us listen to your word of forgiveness, for we are very deaf. Come, fill this moment and free us from sin. Amen. Amen. Our statement of faith is United Methodist Hymnal 887. Again, read responsibly. And remain standing as you are comfortable. shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things, things to come, come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in our creation, will be, be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn now is His Name is Wonderful, number 174. You may remain standing if that's comfortable or be seated. Sitting down. <laughs>
day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading first is from 2 Corinthians 8, 7 through 15. Please pray with me for the illumination of God's message. All embracing God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we might hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Amen. This is the reading. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. We do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The stories of God for the people. Praise be to God. Please rise if you are comfortably able for the second reading. This is from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered round him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be, be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhaging for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembled, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter's dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. 
When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion of people weeping and wailing loudly. When he entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The stories of God for the people. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. stay here because that's where the microphone is. <laughs> Bonus scripture time. Also for today was 2 Samuel 1, verse 1 and then 17 through 27. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in silk clang. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered the song of the bow to be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jashar. He said, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath, Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You, mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle. Jonathan lies slain on your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war perish. And from Psalm 30, just a couple of lines. Psalm 35. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. And verses 11 and 12. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. The reason I added them are kind of twofold. This has always been the story of Saul and Jonathan and David has always been questioned by part of the world as were David and Jonathan actually lovers? Maybe. It's very difficult to tell from that line. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How do you 
Haven't you ever had a friend that was so dear that it didn't matter if they were male or female, gay or straight, it just didn't matter. They loved you and cared for you and you loved and cared for them. I think that's what David is talking about. If there was more than that, it was within completely the culture of the time. The story of Jesus by the lake. By the way, that's why I wore this particular shirt, because this is a fishing story. Jesus is by the lake. He just got back from curing a guy of a legion of demons. Over 2,000. He sent them into pigs and they ran away. Now, if you own the pigs, you're probably a little upset. Just a tad. So Jesus gets in the boat and comes back to the other side of the lake. That's probably a very wise choice on several levels. Because he had cured the man of demons. The man wanted to go with him. But Jesus said, no. Go back to your family and tell them what God has done for you. And he gets to the other side of the lake. Okay. We're in the clear. Things are good. And Jairus comes. I had to actually go online and listen to somebody pronounce Jairus so I could get it right. But Jairus is the president of the synagogue, the man least likely to appreciate Jesus. Because Jesus isn't doing things like the president of the synagogue wants. And then suddenly, he's confronted with something that nobody can fix but Jesus. So he goes to him and says, plead, falls down on his knees in front of him and begs, please, Jesus, come save my daughter. And Jesus agrees. And they start to move. But you gotta remember, Jesus walked around in crowds like Taylor Swift. You know, I used to say Elvis, but now nobody knows who Elvis is, so it doesn't matter. Taylor Swift, she goes out, collects a huge crowd or other people want to see her touch or whatever. Well, that was Jesus. Without media, people had heard enough about him that he can do what? He can feed 5,000 people who are sitting, okay. He can heal people? Really? At this point, Jairus is there and the lady with the hemorrhage. This poor lady for 12 years has been hemorrhaging and nobody can explain why and no doctor can help her and she spends all her money. Have you ever noticed that doctors will occasionally take money without carrying it? That that can happen? Sometimes they will still accept payment even though they can't do a thing. In this case, that was the case. She couldn't get any help from anybody. And she thinks, if I just sneak up behind him and just touch the edge of his cloak, I'll be healed. Now, where she gets this idea, I'm not entirely sure. But when nothing has worked for you for 12 years, you're pretty much up for anything. So she sneaks up and she touches him. She's healed. Not spotting, not nothing. She's healed. And you, the feeling must have been just incredible until Jesus stops. Who touched me? Oh, lady. I don't know who it was, but just quietly. But she did know who. And perhaps the Holy Spirit in her helped her to lift up enough to go, I did. It was me. And the people around her probably knew her and thought, yeah, okay. That old lady's sick. But he said, daughter, your faith has healed you. Believing it would work is what made it work. We'd all like 
that to be for us. If I believe strongly enough, I will be healed. And unfortunately, that's not always God's will, and it doesn't always work that way. But for her, it did. And it was a time for Jesus to demonstrate, look, I don't have to be everywhere and touch people and do it myself. God's doing it, not me. And all you have to do is believe strongly enough to touch me, and it'll work. Faith is healed. Go home. And she got to, assuming there was any home left at that point. But at least she was home. And then, just as everything seems to be working perfectly, all the crowds think, hey, this is pretty cool. She's healed. Jesus is in being nice. No sudden outbursts of anger or anything. And Jairus' friends come and say, don't bother the teacher anymore. Your daughter's dead. And there's a moment there when you just feel like the bottom drops. And there is absolutely nothing that's going to make it all right. And Jesus says, don't worry. And then shows up at a Jewish funeral. They paid people to come and scream. That was the way people did it. You know, they, they wanted lots of misery shown, so they would hire people to show misery. So that maybe, since it's the president of the synagogue, that makes me think maybe those people were there. And Jesus walks into the professional <coughs> whatever. Buyers. I'm losing the word. But anyway, he comes in and says, what's wrong with you people? She's not dead. She's asleep. And they laughed at him. First of all, are you trying to mess up our job? They don't believe that this can happen. And Jesus didn't take them in to see it. He took John and James and Peter. Maybe all three of them, maybe one of them stood in the door. And the mother and father. And the little girls lay in there cold. No pulse. No nothing. And Jesus just says, little girl, get up. And she does. And the mother and father go from the lowest possible point to the highest. Just like that. And that's when I kept hearing the words from the song. Excuse me, put it away. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Isn't that those parents? And all of those professional mourners out there had to go find another job. <laughs> and the other people who had laughed at Jesus are not laughing now and are wondering if perhaps this hip, which doesn't work real well, could just get a touch. Because you start getting practical when you see miracles. I'd like one. But in all cases here, it was faith. Jairus' faith to let Jesus keep trying. The mother, who was probably just absolutely at wit's end. Everyone had enough faith in Jesus to say, okay, try. And I tell you, we often don't have enough faith in Jesus to try. And I'm as bad at that as anybody. Sometimes it just seems like I'm retired. This isn't really important. I just don't want to try. And I 
think we all get to that point sometimes where we just aren't willing to see if we have enough faith to let God do one more thing in our life. I tell you, God is ready to do things in your life till the very last second of your life and beyond. That's what God can do. Jesus demonstrated it here. But we're the ones who have to have enough faith to try. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. Our next hymn, in a second, is United Methodist Hymnal number 367. He touched me. Time for joys and concerns. Any joys today? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead. I made it to Santa Barbara with the help of my niece Kimberly who drove me there and back. And my brother had a very nice dinner with us for his 80th, 85th birthday. And then we turned right around and came back right here. <laughs> and that was a real joy because we made it there and we made it back and everything was good. Amen. God bless us very much. Any other joys, Jack? Jake <coughs> had a CT scan, and he's doing okay. They checked his heart. It looks real good. It, no problems particularly, so yeah. yay. <laughs> Any other joys? My puppy is your puppy? My puppy and my dog Spencer bring me joy. Oh, good. Mm. Our puppy's bringing us a lot of joy, too, although he tends to bounce off me. You know, runs up, 
hits you with both front feet to change direction. He's playing with you. Yeah, he's playing with me, but if he hits me in the back of the knee, I'm going down like a big dog. <laughs> so, anyway, you can pray that he gets all on the front so I can catch him. <laughs> May not be. May have to actually train him before he's going to have to finish training me. Okay. Any concerns? Jackie? My sister's husband, Jerry, is having a procedure on the 3rd of July. Uh, They're putting a tube down his nose to check a mass in his lung. Mm -hmm. And he's not happy about it, and we need prayer. Can we have prayers for Jerry? Please. I have a concern, and it's not a regular local concern. I mean, in Oklahoma, they've decided that every school is going to teach from the Bible in a history. And my problem is, right there, you can see three Bibles. I got a different one here. Which Bible are you going to teach from? Greek Orthodox. <laughs> well, and, and exactly. In what language? They want to make a historical comment. Well, the Germans brought German Bibles, and the people from Slovakia brought, tended to bring Eastern Orthodox Bibles. And it took me, well, it was supposed to take me three years to become a master of divinity, which still strikes me as the weirdest title anybody ever got. <laughs> Except for Doctor of Divinity, I bet you didn't know God was sick. <laughs> anyway, the idea that you can teach kids in 5th through 12th grade the Bible and American history, in my eyes, is insane. <laughs> and it's going to hurt people more than help them. And I just want prayer that people understand what they're asking. Well, teachers are not preachers. And the schools are not churches. Well, I did see one person who made the most sense. He said, if you want your kids to learn the Ten Commandments of the Bible, take them to church. Yeah, really. Right. Anyway, that's my concern. I, I remember my high school, we had an elective course. Bible was history. I, I, didn't, I didn't really see anything wrong except I, I questioned the motives of this movement, Ten Commandments and so forth, that they really want to teach a historical perspective of the Bible rather than a, a kind of a quasi-religious. I'm afraid it's mostly about trying to convert people and not about educating but that's my take, and what I really want is all of us to pray that God sees where it ought to work. I, my, I, I have a concern about, the, the, I see on the news how this is a record travel weekend coming up. People are going to be in airports and on the highway, and I, I hope that everybody shows each other proper courtesy and there's no major accidents and everybody gets to where they need to join with loved ones and celebrate life. Amen. Amen. I'm very for all the dogs that have to deal with people firing at <laughs> fire. fire. I, I am concerned about fireworks again this year. I don't mind that the regular one. The dogs are probably, you know, the 4th of July. I have a problem with everybody's hidden stashes. And they lay them all over our neighborhood, and it just makes my dogs, one of my dogs, arrive. Well, we'll pray for a lack of possibilities this year. Yeah. Okay, any other concerns? Oh, well, um, Christy's visiting in February, um, who had a, a ruptured gallbladder, uh, and she would be in the hospital for a few days to see us. Uh, yeah. Right now. Um, 
for her. And I think Mel had his hand up. You did that. Oh, I'm coming back to it. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm in the old car club, and one of our members has just been diagnosed with uh, quite severe cancer, uh, Marlene Craig, and uh, it'd be good to pray for her. Please keep Marlene in your prayers. Oh, and her name is Chris. Chris and, please, and Chris. Any others? Let us pray. Lord, we come to you this day as we are preparing for a celebration. But we come to you with those who are ill, who need your touch, who need to be healed by you, however you heal. We need to know that you're working. We need to feel your presence. We love you. And we need you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Uh, it's time to pass the peace of Christ from one to another. Peace in Christ, Mel. She'll be alright. Peace, kid. Peace, Troublemaker. That's right. right no, there. I might make another so ugly face. Really well. <laughs> <laughs> I do those all the time. <laughs> okay. I didn't think to do that. <laughs> Next hymn is in the United Methodist Hymnal 474, Precious Lord, Take My Name.
fight through it. <laughs> well, the way it's, it's played, it's obvious it's good, but didn't realize the distortion. Okay. It's now time to worship the Lord through the giving of our tithes and offerings. <laughs> Thank you. 